In this video, we present a system for computing joint kinematics in real time and demonstrate how to build your own copy. This system uses open source hardware and software to enable low cost and commercially available components to compute joint kinematics with a musculoskeletal model. The system costs on the order of $100 and can be assembled without soldering or coding. This system is flexible and can track from 1 to 14 body segments to customize to many applications. A simple push button allows for easy starting and stopping of the recordings. The system can record motion for 6 hours on one charge and store more than 100 hours of motion. A system like this could help translate biomechanics and clinical research into real world settings to translate findings into impactful tools. Okay, so we will be assembling the base of the real-time kinematic system. And so this consists of a bunch of different parts. So here I've unpacked the Raspberry Pi, the case, um, the quick connector, which is how we'll connect um, the sensors to the Pi, this quick multiplexer, which allows us to plug a bunch of different sensors in. So that's how we'll allow different IMUs to be connected, one IMU which will be worn on the hip for your base orientation, and a button LED which will allow you to start stop recordings and also tell you when um, the device is actually recording or ready to record. And then over here we have our battery and our 32 gigabyte SD card. I've also got some um, zip ties for securing the device later and this little screwdriver comes with the fan, which you'll need. So if you open up the case, I've done a couple steps here. So at first you'll need to trim away parts of this lid. And what you need to be able to trim away is so that you can actually fit this um, hat onto the lid. So you notice that there are these two little ports and also this um, terminal connector here. And so you need to be able to push those inside. So I have screwed in the fan using two of the fan screws. And you can see here that this side is open, which allows me to um, actually slide this connector in between the fan and the lid. And so this looks a little funny right now, but it'll make sense once the whole device is assembled Basically, it allows us to have this hat on, but also keep the fan, which is required for cooling. And make sure that this side of the fan with the solid bottom plate is facing down. Um, and this prevents the fan from touching the pie and um, causing the fan to stop. So once you have that done, we can start assembling pieces of the main unit. So this is our base plate, and I have attached it to the belt with um, one zip tie and some velcro here and so what I did was I put the belt on I determined where on the belt the pie should be so that it was in the middle of my back which you can see from the examples and then I fastened it there and I also put a little velcro on for the battery which will go on last you want to make sure when you do place this on that you orient the case with all of the ports facing towards the person's head. So this would attach directly to their back. So take the pie and we'll place it on this bottom piece. And we will go ahead and place on the second part of the case. Now we will take our little lid assembly and we're going to push this in and we want to make sure that the pins line up with the Raspberry Pi here. So this is really the, the trickiest part of the assembly because it's a little bit delicate and you want to make sure that the pins line up. And then you have to make sure that the lid also lines up with device and then you can just kind of press it in place and there we have it. 
Now we can actually stick in our SD card into this slot. Although we'll have to program that, so you may want to leave that out till we programmed it. Um, and now we can attach the final pieces to the lid. So the lid acts as a mount for the rest. So first we will take our um, I2C MUX and we'll place it on this upright corner like this. And we're going to use two of the tiny screws that came with the fan. And we'll be using our little screwdriver and lining it up with these perforated holes on the case. Okay, and it's not moving around too much, so that seems good. And then we'll take one of the little quick connectors, we'll plug it into this port that says main, and we'll plug that into either of these two little ports over here. And so now we have our multiplexer connected to our Raspberry Pi. So now when we connect all our other sensors, like the IMUs and the button, um, they will be all routed to the Pi. So next we'll take our button and I'm actually going to mount it right here um, using two longer screws from the fan. And you can, if you wish, you can use a longer cable and place this somewhere else on the belt, which might be more convenient than on the back this little screwdriver and mount the button. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Um, and then again, we will use one of these quick connectors and I'll connect the button to port one. So button and port one. And now you have the button connected to your system. And last, we will mount this IMU on the hip. It is important. And so we'll actually be making sure that the um, side with no parts on it is flush against the lid. And these larger holes, which we'll use to mount, are on the bottom. Great, and doesn't seem to be moving around. So now again, we will connect this using one of the jumper cables, and we'll connect this IMU to port zero. Lastly, we will take these zip ties, and as you noticed before, we can actually pull this bottom part of the base off, and so we're going to zip tie around this to prevent it from coming off accidentally. That's all pushed together, we're going to um, actually zip tie it around the lid and then right around the back and so I'm gonna use four zip ties and put them all flush. You have your first zip tie running under the lid right here. You can take your second zip tie and put it so that the head is about the length of this side then on the back, you're going to put your third zip tie. And then you're going to take your fourth zip tie to finish the square. And now I'm just going to take turns tightening these. some pliers actually to help tighten them even more. And then I'm going to trim them off using some scissors. So now we have our base with everything mounted. And we can go ahead and if you want, you can stick on your battery, but just wait to power up the system until we have loaded the code. So we have USB to this side, and then we have this USB-C connector, which goes to the top of the power right there to actually start it. And there is the base of the system.
the last step before we can put this on and start moving is to add the IMUs to the limbs. So what we'll do is, for this simple example, we'll use two IMUs. So here's one of the little guys. And you'll notice that I've already attached some Velcro, so you'll want to cut that and stick it to the back to adhere um, to the straps. So an important thing when placing the IMUs is to use the proper orientation. So if we look very closely, you can see that we have these little axes on the IMU. And so how we'll always mount the body is with this flat side attached to the body so that we can then connect to these um, two ports. So to connect these to the base of the system, we'll be using these quick connectors, which use these pre-made cables to connect these tiny ports. So all you'll do is plug in one side to the IMU and then come down to the base system and then plug into one of the available ports. For our demo, we will plug into four. Now to attach our second IMU to the shank or shin, um, we will use a small connector. It just joins two of the cables together because the longest single cable is half a meter. So now we'll have two together, which should be long enough to get to the uh, shin. So you'll attach one to the IMU and then one to port five like we did before. To set up the software for the system, you'll need your 32 gigabyte SD card and you'll download the um, image file from the instructions. So you can click on the link of this video um, to find that. And once you've downloaded it and unzipped the file, here I've done it, um, we can copy this to our SD card using a program called Belena Etcher. And so what this is, is it contains all the code and um, the operating system that will run on the Raspberry Pi. And so we've done all that for you, so you don't have to worry about knowing how to write code or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and open up Helena Etcher. You'll click Flash from File. You'll go to wherever you have saved this um, image. Click Open. You can see here click the right image, and it's 32 gigabytes, which is why you need a 32 gigabyte SD card. Now we'll select our SD card, which is this one, and then you can go ahead and click Flash, and um, when you click Flash, it will take about five minutes or so, and it'll copy everything to the SD card. I've actually already done it. Um, and once this is complete, you can eject your SD card from your computer, put it into the Raspberry Pi, and you are ready to boot up. Now we'll be powering up our device. So to do that, we'll connect the battery to the Raspberry Pi. The first time you start it up, make sure that you're not wearing the device because when it boots up, it's going to calibrate the sensors. And so make sure that the, the IMUs are all at rest. You'll know what the device is doing based on how this LED is acting. So right now it's off, so that means it's still booting up. You'll notice the LED start to pulse, and this indicates that it's calibrating these gyroscopes on the sensors. Once that finishes, it'll begin to blink, and this indicates the system is ready to be calibrated. But first, we must um, set up the device on the body. Now we'll be putting the system on the body. And so here we have two Velcro straps that I've applied to my thigh and shank. So first I'll put on the belt. I'll make sure that the IMU and Raspberry Pi unit is fixed in the middle of my back and firmly. Then I will stick on the IMUs. Again, make sure that the flat side with Velcro is up against your leg, and that the x-axis of the IMU is in the positive direction towards my head.
this longer cable, I'm going to actually Velcro it down too, so it's not swinging around. And yeah, you'll just want to make sure that the sensors are in the sagittal plane and able to move freely. Uh, so now we're ready to record with our system, so I'll press this blinking button to actually start recording. Here I forgot to mention that when you click this button, you actually calibrate the system to an initial standing pose. And so this is how the system knows your starting position. If you're going to be using upper limb measurements or more than just the simple leg positions, make sure you check out the paper to calibrate everything following our specifications. And now I'll put a side by side of the simulated leg and my leg so you can see how it tracks the motion. And then to stop the recording, I'll press the button again. And that's how you use the device.